4 a.m. in the Schaub family home. It's a restless night. Was hast du? Du, jetzt habe ich zum zweiten Mal Blut im Urin. Sicher? Ja. Jetzt sollte ich aber glaube ich mal im Arzt anrufen. Äh, Mensch. Ja. Taking his wife's advice, Mr. Schaub goes to his family doctor the next morning to give a urine sample. Blood in the urine or hematuria may be a sign of a serious medical condition and should be evaluated immediately. Based on the test results, the doctor refers Mr. Schaub to a urologist to determine the exact cause of the bleeding. Common causes of hematuria include inflammations of the urinary tract, kidney stones or tumors. Cigarette smoking and tobacco use are the most common risk factors. During the consultation, the doctor arranges an appointment at Euroviva for Mr. Schaub. He shows up at the specialist clinic, where he's booked for further diagnosis by a urologist. Herr Schaub, Ihr Hausarzt hat Sie mir geschickt wegen Blut im Urin. In a brief interview, Dr. Gablinger obtains a general idea of the patient's lifestyle and health status by asking him personal questions. Haben Sie mal geraucht? Ja, ich habe geraucht, etwa ein Päckchen, anderthalb. Wie viele Jahre haben Sie das gemacht? Ja, etwa 40 Jahre schon. Okay, somit gehörten Sie zu einem Risikopatient. Ich will nachher noch schnell einen Ultraschall machen. After the consultation, the doctor orders both an ultrasound and a cystoscopy. Computer tomography is recommended to examine the upper urinary tract, specifically the kidneys and ureter. We machen jetzt dann die Blasenspiegelung. Ich werde Ihnen alles erklären, jeden Schritt. During the cystoscopy, a small optic is inserted into the bladder to carefully examine the body for diseased tissue. The purpose is to find the source of the bleeding and make sure there's no malignant tumor present in the bladder. Das einführen, Spülung anmachen. Okay, also da haben wir eine Harnröhre, die sieht normal aus. Gehen wir weiter. Dann die Prostata ist eng. So, jetzt sind wir in der Blase. Wie geht's Ihnen bis jetzt? Oh, gut. gut. Also, Blasenboden sieht gut aus. Blasendach sieht auch gut aus. Jetzt schauen wir linke Harnleitermündung. Also da sieht man ganz, ganz ein kleines oberflächliches Blasentumor. Das, das wird wahrscheinlich das sein, was blutet hat. Okay. So, wie kann ich dir das geben? Also, Herr Schaub, wir haben Blutungsquelle gefunden. Es ist das ganz kleine Tumor. Sie müssen nicht Angst haben, natürlich, es ist ein Blasentumor, aber es sieht sehr klein aus, es sieht auch oberflächlich aus. Und wenn wirklich der schlimmste Fall eintreten sollte, dass das ein hochaggressiver Tumor ist, wäre es auf alle Fälle nur lokalisiert. Es sieht aber nicht nach einem allzu aggressiven Tumor aus. Following the examination, the urologist explains the treatment options to Mr. Sharp. Dann besprechen wir, wie es weitergeht. Dr. Gablinger recommends an endoscopic removal through the urethra. The tumor diagnosis has understandably raised questions, doubts and fears. This has prompted the couple to further inform themselves about bladder tumors. Bladder tumors are almost always malignant tumors, in other words, bladder cancer. What is relevant is whether it's a non-invasive or an invasive tumor and how far it has grown into the bladder wall. Most tumors are non-invasive, superficial tumors, which are not life-threatening under regular urological monitoring and may be removed operatively. The much rarer invasive tumors grow significantly faster into the tissue and are therefore dangerous. If a tumor penetrates the deeper layers of tissue, other treatments must be considered, such as surgical removal of the entire bladder, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or a combination of these. As Euroviva offers Mr. Schaub a surgery appointment a week later, he feels well informed and looked after. While he's slightly nervous, he's also relieved that the problem is being tackled actively and at an early stage. 
Arriving at Euroviva on time for his appointment, Mr. Schaub is pleasantly surprised by the warm welcome and is immediately taken to his room. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Schaub is visited by the anesthesiologist, who again discusses the surgery and anesthesia options with him. Mr. Schaub requests a general anesthetic. There is no problem with agreeing to this option. The next morning, Mr. Schaub is taken to the operating theatre for the surgery, where a highly qualified five-member team of doctors and nurses attend to him. As with the cystoscopy, the doctor first inserts the surgical instrument in the bladder to locate the small tumour. The so-called resectoscope emits light and is equipped with a high-frequency electric noose and channels for continuous irrigation to aid the surgeon's view. From here on, it's plain sailing. Bladder tumors are usually removed using so-called transurethral resection, abbreviated TUR. When the resectoscope reaches the operation site, the tumor is cut out with a high-frequency electric noose. At the same time, the current destroys remaining tumor cells, as well as residual tumor cells, and atrophies blood vessels to stop the bleeding. As some residual bleeding is unavoidable, an irrigation catheter is inserted upon completion of the procedure. This flushes out the blood, preventing blood clots that could cause pain or blockages in the bladder. After a few days, the catheter is removed. An hour later, the patient is taken to the recovery station, where he's cared for and monitored. A few minutes following surgery, he is responsive and ready to return to his room to rest. Dr. Gublinger pays Mr. Sharp a visit. The two discuss the surgery, which went well. Since the bladder tumour was detected early enough and immediately treated, Mr. Schaub has every reason to be optimistic about his future. His hospital stay lasts about three days. The next day, Mr. Schaub allows himself to be pampered by the Euroviva staff. He and his wife are pleased that the procedure went well and are looking forward to their upcoming holiday in Italy. Much quieter nights under the starry sky of Puglia.